excuse me. That was part A just to fill that out. Part B is just to graph it. So if I had to choose a scale, I'm going to have to go from 1 up to 5. So that's on the, which axis would that be? Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal because it's the independent variable. So let's do that. And I'm going to have to go up to 750. Maybe 8 would be a nice round number to choose. Okay, so let's put those markings in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, now, just like before, to get a straight line, you only really need two points. You don't have to put every single one on. If you've marked out all of your uh, spots on here nicely, then if you've picked the two points accurately, then it will pass through all the other points as well if you connect them up. So on mine, I should find $1.50 is going to be three quarters of the way up here. That'll be $1.50 for a single pack of pencils. And $7.50 is going to be around there. So that corresponds to five packs. Excuse me. Now, with your ruler, if you've chosen these points correctly, I should be able to join them up. But I'm going to do more than just join them up. I'm actually going to go a little bit further down to the end here to include a point that I didn't have in my table. And it's actually a really important point, which is why I'm highlighting it. So when you join these up, number one, you should be able to confirm if you draw your um, line up to where all of your other points should correspond to. For example, I went to two. You should find that is equivalent to the other values that you've got. You can confirm those really quickly. But secondly, have a look at where this graph begins. What is that spot? Zero. It's zero, zero. It's the origin, right? Now, this is really important because it's a feature of all direct linear variation situations. Every single one passes through the origin. Because if you've got none of one thing, if you didn't buy any pencils, then it's not going to cost you any money or whatever kinds of two quantities you're comparing. Okay. Part C, we've actually already done this. The constant of variation is the same as the constant of proportionality. We've got it. It's, uh, what did we say, $1.50. <clears throat> Write the linear equation for P in terms of M. Okay, so remember over here I said every variation equation will look like this, just with the appropriate choices of pronumeral. So which one's X and which one's Y? Is, it, is this one going to be number of pencils, or is this one going to be number of pencils? OK, x will be the number of pencils, because is, x is what we usually label as the independent variable on which the other one depends. So where I'm up to, part d, the linear equation will look like this. If this is going to be n, it'll be $1.50 times n, which leaves p, the price, over on the left-hand side. There's my linear equation. Find the cost of nine packs of pencils. Because I now have the equation, I don't need to rely on the graph. I can go straight to the equation and get it precisely. So I can say P equals, when N equals nine, $1.50 times nine. I think that's $13.50. Someone tell me if I'm doing my numbers right, $13.50. Before I write it down, yep. There's the price. Um, I should put some units on there, so I'll put dollar $P equals $13.50. And then lastly, if you see F, I'm going in reverse order. Um, we've been tripped up by this before. I noticed in the AP4s we had a bit of trouble with this. You can have a formula. We give you so many formulas on the formula data sheet. The key is do you know how to use them? If the price for n packs of pencils is $27, find n. So where am I going to put $27? Over x, p. No, wait, okay, p. $27 is a price, so I'm going to substitute it for where p belongs. So it's on the left-hand side, which is a little bit weird. So I'm going to get this, 27 equals $1.50 times n. Uh, one of the ways you can know that you've done this right is because you still have this pronumeral here, which is the one that you've been asked to find. Well, it had better be there because I want to get a final line of n equals something or other. 
Now, I notice, um, just by coincidence, 27 is exactly double the number I got in the previous question. Yeah? That, I think that's just a coincidence. So therefore, how many pencils without even using a calculator? There should be 18. And of course, you can double check that 27 divided by 1.5 gives you that number. Okay. Direct linear variation is pretty straightforward. The numbers are really easy, the values are easy, and the shapes are easy too if you were to graph them. Okay. So this is just sort of getting us warmed up for when we have direct nonlinear variation and we have um, indirect variation, which we will come to in AM5. Okay?